Hello everyone and welcome back to Questionable Car Club. Today I have another car graveyard for you. So let's take around and see and look and we nah, uh, uh. Let's go take a look. First thing actually is this <laughs> Mark 3.5, I think. See it Ibiza. So I'm making a particular beeline for this. I think it's got Rover caps, wheel caps on. Because this was my first car. Oh, do you know, it smells like old buildings in here, actually. I think I might have to sit in here just for old time's sake, you know. Is it... Yeah, okay. Oh. oh, it takes me back. Do you know, I would absolutely love one of these. I still miss mine. I think we all miss our first cars, don't we? And this didn't used to work. You used to have to bash it to get it to do anything. <laughs> oh. Yeah, mine was in a right, a really unusual green. And even if I was to find one, I doubt I'd find one in that colour. Oh, that's a nice little trip down memory lane. Although now I'm in it, I don't know. Got lots of mouse shit in it as well. That's not particularly nice. Maybe I should get out in a minute. <laughs> I remember it was really gutless. It was a 1.4, but it just did nothing. Uh, well, maybe I'll find one again someday. Yeah, that does bring back a few memories. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine was a W. Uh, never really used to see those in white, actually. Anyway, so we've got a few MGs here. Uh, ZSs, Rover 25s. This colour, someone can comment with the name of it. It's such a nice colour. I always say BMWs do the nicest blues, but that is a real runner up for like the nicest blue ever. <laughs> There's a nice old Mercedes here. Let's see what that's like inside. Whoa, that is that is green. And do you know, it's so mouldy in here. It actually smells like beer. <laughs> Looks like it's got about 180K on it. Wow, that's uh, definitely let a hell of a lot of water in. My God, I've seen some green cars, but that is, look, there's a forest growing on the floor mat. <laughs> It's actually just quite impressive for how wrecked it is. So there looks like there might be some people in the distance. So I'm gonna try and uh, keep a low profile, which is why I'm not going in all the cars because you never know if someone pops their head up. Um, but let's take a look over here. Right, so unplanned technical issues. My gimbal has just decided that it wants to start vibrating like mad. So. I'm now hand holding, so apologies if it's a little bit shaky, but uh, yes, these Sierra roads are really popular and um, the fuel co uh, consumption in them was amazing. Got like 70 miles a gallon out of them, <laughs> especially the diesel ones. All right, Subaru Forester, that's a relatively new one, a 2007 Panda. There's a, a deer shooting tower up there. Mm, this has been uh, pretty destroyed. It's looking rather wet in there. Still a relatively new car to find in the graveyard, but not overly reliable. Subaru Foresters, MGZT. Lots of MGs here, more so than Rovers, which is good because the MGs are more exciting, but uh, that looks rather base speckish to me still wet they've got very wet cars here oh, absolutely soaking oh now that's a nice one there is a e36 bmw 328 which is the bmw to buy if you were ever after one what's this got a note in the window this has been sold what have been told this car something i don't know that's way too um faded to ever figure out what that says is it a uh, a rover sterling yes my dad had the 820 which is uh kind of similar to this I and mean, as kids we loved that car <laughs> no you can't get in it though oh that's a shame what's the mileage 68k a baby depending what engines in it of course I have been told, God knows what that says. 
but here is the E36 to have, unless of course it's an M3, the 328i, and a coupe. Worth a lot of money now. Ugh. And it's open. Bonus. Also smells like abandoned buildings, full of dog hair. <laughs> Wet floors, just like all the others, yeah. These things were seriously popular and pretty quick back in the day. And um, then when the E46 came in, they were replaced or overtaken, I should say, by the 330. But there should be, let's see if we can look in the bonnet, under the bonnet, a nice straight six under here, unless it's been pulled out. That's a really good engine, very well built. BMW's best engine, probably this straight six sort of setup. <laughs> Still got coolant in there, um, windscreen fluid that's maintained its proper colour. <laughs> well, mind you, it's not looking so fresh on this side. That would be one now that would definitely get pulled out of here if it uh, had the chance, but I don't think it's well. It's got sill cover, so you can't really see the state of it, but by and large, it doesn't look too bad. Oh, 205 Mardi Gras, the car that everybody had. <laughs> Let's take a look at this Mercedes first. Okay, right, this one really smells so bad. It actually smells like onions, uh, lots more mouse crap in it but only 32,000 miles on the clock. That is absolutely nothing at all. That's shocking. I don't know why on earth you'd leave that here. Makes me wonder perhaps if the person who put them here was a hoarder rather than someone that was saving them. Somebody was hoarding MGs for some reason. Let's have a look at the 205. Although, of course, as every Mercedes, it's had the badge pinched off it. Right, that's the last car here. The uh, cars are here in two sections. So this is the first bit and then there's some more in another bit. 45K on this, on an, in an automatic as well. I really like these seats, they're really nice. I would assume these were the Mardi Gras specific trim seats. Um, this is obviously a special edition. Look, there's stuff in the back there, invoices. How much did, were they charging for a service? I can't see, but put it this way, the total bill came to £99.50. <laughs> it's unusual to uh, see a car with the paperwork left behind it, but this has probably got the best interior out of all of them. I'm not a big 205 person, but I actually quite like this. Right, let's move on. Do you know, I wouldn't usually film me walking around places because it's boring, but this is exceptional. I have gone through hell and <laughs> I have a stick and I have to put other logs down in front of me to get me over whatever the hell this is. Look. Ugh. I hope this video does well. <laughs> right. I've still got, oh my God, look. I've still got all of that to go. This is just relentless. I mean, you can see why Top Gear had the big money, can't you? Here's me like, oh, some mud. And they're in bloody Madagascar. Well, I'd probably rather be in Madagascar than this. This is, oh no, Madagascar. Sorry, unsubscribe now, I won't blame you. Right, let's carry on. And, uh, oh God, this is, this is actually exhausting. <laughs> Right, I think my time at Madagascar is nearing an end. That looks to me like the finish line. And hopefully where I can finally turn off this bloody path and film some more cars. Right, part two is going well. Uh, it is obviously a Subaru Impreza with Colin McRae's signature on it. So you know it's been raced. If in doubt, flat out, of course. <laughs> Those axle stands don't look too old, but mm, cover's missing. So let's take a closer look at this Impreza because this is clearly the most important car here. Definitely the standout car, isn't it? Even better than the old Mercs. A little bit rusty there, but this is a 1993 
So it is the earliest year that you could get one of these. And underneath, yeah, flat full boxer engine. Had a few things done to it by the looks of it, obviously. No one keeps one completely standard. Ooh, that's uh, pretty crispy in there. Maybe these are hiding battle scars or just holding the panel on together. Yeah, holes down here. This is a crispy car. Sills don't seem too bad though. Oh no, they've been cut out of the back actually. But yeah, underneath, that's uh, hmm. not looking good. And I don't think that's only four years worth of rust either. Let's uh, take a look inside. So, uh, now see this interior is nice. They've done the uh, racing harness, obviously. Seats are good. It doesn't smell moldy and they've got some exhaust bits there and the floors seem to be dry 118k on this so yeah as i said this is the earliest that you could get an impressor this model 93 and um very nice my friend has one and um drives it like an idiot as i think most people with one would <laughs> i like these little aerials i think they're actually automatic got a little bit of bubbling coming up here and i think that's the least of its worries though because it has no back window <laughs> so yeah all the rain is just going to go straight in the boot and rot that straight through as well that is a shame i'm surprised actually given that it has no back window that it's not moldy inside the interior is probably saveable which is odd but um yeah they've definitely uh they've covered it up and the cover is blown off maybe that was keeping the rain out at some point. They haven't come back to do anything to it since. Got to have your uh, stickers on there, of course. But yeah, look, this is uh, this is really far gone. I don't think this will be saved. If it was maybe something like an RA or like a really special edition one, perhaps it might have been. But unfortunately, I think this is too far gone. It's on uh, stock wheels. That's for the fact that the rest of it's been changed. The fact that it's on stock wheels is uh, really unusual. But yeah, isn't that crusty? Look, everything would need to be completely fixed. God, I did not believe that Colin McRae died in 2007. Seems like a lot more recently than that. I love this badge as well. <laughs> Real 90s thing. I used to play, obviously, a lot of Gran Turismo when I was a kid. And uh, this was my brother's favorite car when we were kids. And mine was the Skyline. But um, yeah, I haven't found any Skylines yet. But yeah, this is my first Impreza. But yeah, that's uh, not looking too good at all, is it? Right, well, let's go and take a look at some of the other cars here. More Rovers. Very smashed in. Well, MG, I should say. Same as the Rover 75, of course, but... Uh, mm. Cleo's in a bush. God. It's a really odd division of the land here. Because I'm in a completely different place. Another Subaru. Oh, look at that. Oh, Mercedes 300 SEC. Can I get over to that? I don't think I can. Oh, it's destroyed. That's a shame. Do you know, the more of these old Mercs that I find, the more I kind of want an old Merc. But... I've got far too many other cars to be taking on more stuff. <laughs> Some modern stuff. Now, what's that in the bushes over there? Got those. <laughs> Probably another MG, but I'll have a look in a minute. And an Astra. <laughs> Doesn't that just look like nicked? Nicked in Essex, dumped on a lane. <laughs> Rovers. This is where all the Rovers have come. Now, I would imagine a lot of the Rovers here are probably the 1.8s because they were very well known for their head gasket problems and uh, subsequently a lot of them died. Oh, what's, oh no, I can see a Mercedes in there. Oh no, <laughs> I thought it was a Mercedes. It's another Rover. A coupe of some kind. Oh no, it's a, uh, oh that is an 820. That's a shame, I'd love to see one of those again. Not, not seen one really since I was a kid. <laughs> uh, your granny's favorite car over there. 
a full focus there. This is all very uh, modern bits. What's behind the focus? Another. Is that another uh, voxel? I don't know. Let's carry on. Oh, hello. Is that, someone will tell me, the, okay, now it's got BRM on it. I'm thinking it's a BRM. <laughs> the racing version of the Rover 25, which was, yeah, it looks like it. it's got the um, extra gear stick. Oh my God, what is, th there's an actual bird's nest in the dashboard. <laughs> right, I'm gonna uh, zoom in because I can't get into the car, but look there. There's a, bir <laughs> there's a bird's nest in a car. Uh oh, I kind of want to take that as a souvenir. As long as there are no birds in it, but uh, that is definitely a first for me. <laughs> um, they've picked a decent home. It is a BRM. They're creeping up in value. Um, just I th they're quite rare, and uh, I think they were all British racing green, unless of course that's not the BRM I'm talking about. Right. What we've got here, Fiat Punto, another car that just looks like it's been nicked and dumped, doesn't it? Um, I'm not saying these are nicked cars, I doubt that they are. There's something, a Honda. No, is that a Honda Concerto or just an Accord over there in the back? What's it on? An M Reg. Mm, could be. I can't get over there, it's too overgrown, it's really annoying. Another Rover 100. Perhaps I can uh, climb over this. Uh, an MGF. My, <laughs> my dad had one of those and let me borrow it. And I get back to him about three months later with 5,000 extra miles on it and a whole bunch of bold tyres and he went mad at me. Um, Rover 25s, more Rovers, more MGs. This is definitely where they've all ended up. Let's uh, take a look in this and feel free to comment below with any stories of your nan having one of these. What's that one died on? 29,000 miles. <laughs> yeah, see this one, I mean, they're not unique at a low mileage, but people do like to, uh, ow, 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 fuck. Oh, Christ. People do like to, people do like to put them up for sale for about three grand, thinking that they're onto the next big winner, and they just, they're just not. Okay, so, we got a few more MGs, a few more focuses. As I said, I do apologise if this video is a little bit on the shaky side. I will now have to invest in a new Kimball. Uh, <laughs> so please feel free to go to my Patreon. No, I don't, I don't do the Patreon thing. Not yet. I'm not that, that desperate. Um, right, we've got two Rover 25s of the same colour, which is nice because I like to see things like that. Now, this is not on the land that I'm on, but this must be someone else's car. Just up there, a, uh, an old Mini. I don't know if that's uh, alive or, no, it's got no lights, it's dead. <laughs> ah, something different. <laughs> an Alfa Romeo, one, two, three, four, five, because I don't know my Alfa Romeo numbers. Anyone can comment with that. Those uh, were just before. Alfa Romeo got really, really nice and they did like the 159 and its facelifts. Alfa Romeo hadn't resolved their reliability problems. They only sort of really sorted that out with the Brera. Um, so that one is probably in here for a good reason. But yes, yeah, so plenty of focuses and granny cars. <laughs> right, let's head back out. Ugh. Right, that is all for today. Thank you for joining me and <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so please make sure that you like and subscribe for more. I will be back next week with another episode of Questionable Car Club. There's my stick. I'm going to now walk about half a mile through the mud and go home. Make sure that you check me out on Instagram at AutoAddictJames and on TikTok at Questionable Car Club. I'll see you next week.